Hey guys, coming right back at you with another pop culture reference. You guys know Lucille Ball and Ethel, I think is her friend. Um, anyway, so we're ta starting our next chapter over sampling. So we looked at randomness and uh, simulations and the importance of using randomness um, and how we can harness the power of random integers to basically run simulations to see what might happen, not necessarily what will happen, and then make a rough estimate about uh, the average, based on our simulation, the average amount of times that we would expect to have to open cereal boxes before collecting all three or something along those lines, or how many children on average would we have to have before we had two of each sex or something. All right, so next thing we're gonna look at for gathering data is sampling. So sampling is incredibly important, also known as polling or sending out search surveys. Uh, it's how we gather information and we sample from a larger population. So this is going to be pretty vocabulary heavy uh, chapter. So there is all the vocabulary on the top of your worksheet. You're probably going to want to read through those as we go through this. I'll be explaining it, showing you the same slides over and over again. But um, yeah, I'm sorry. It, I'll try to make it as visual as I can. Otherwise, it's just kind of memorizing samples and trying to get your brain to wrap around um, how this stuff works. The good news is a lot of this vocab is stuff that you probably have heard before. So it shouldn't be too hard for you to get it straight. Okay, let's move on. So the uh, the scene that we're referring to here uh, is whenever they work at a chocolate factory and uh, they're supposed to be wrapping these uh, chocolates or whatever and they're too slow because they're new at the job or whatever, Ethel and uh, Lucia Ball, that they start... Um, <laughs> They start shoving them in their mouths, and once their mouths are full, they were you know sampling the the chocolate, which they weren't supposed to do. And they start shoving it down their shirt, which is absolutely hilarious. And the best part about GIFs is I can push this button right here, and it's stoppable, which is amazing. It's not. I just you know anyway stuff like that. All right, so uh, first two vocabulary words is population and our sample. So the population or population of interest is the entire group of people that we're trying to draw conclusions based on. So for instance, in the last election, the, the people we're interested is not, not all American adults. We don't want to know how all American adults are going to vote. We want to know of the people who are likely to vote or those who are registered voters, um, more than likely just those who are likely to vote is what they were interested in. How are they going to vote? And so that was a real question that we had. And then from that, because we can't run a census, we can't actually ask every single person who's going to vote um, who they're going to vote for. We had to instead draw upon samples. And this is where they look at um, uh, exit polling. And so people at the polling place, as they leave, they ask them, who did you vote for? And if they're telling them the truth, of course, which is a big question with response bias, we'll get into that. I believe biases, we're going to talk about that tomorrow, which is really, really, really fun. I think you're going to enjoy tomorrow's video, um, one that I we would be doing in person, but now we're going to do it on the video. So welcome back uh, to distance learning. If you've been doing distance learning, you don't even know what's going on. So uh, hi. All right. So uh, from that, we want to draw a sample. And we're assuming that our sample is representative of the actual population itself. If it is, then we can calculate means or proportions uh, from that sample. And then hopefully with some within some margin of error, be able to draw uh, some some conclusion of whatever sample statistic we're looking for based on the entire parameter. We'd be able to say, we believe 45% of Americans agree with this proposition or are gonna vote for so-and-so plus or minus a margin of error of 5%. So we believe the true uh, the true proportion is anywhere from 40 to 50%. And we're not sure exactly where it is from there, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, that's what we're doing when we, when we take samples or we send out surveys to people or we're doing polling. It's the same idea. Okay. So again, the population is the entire group of individuals being examined, the people that we're interested in. Uh, what we are examining is called the population parameter. So PP, population parameter. The sample is a group of individuals selected to represent the population. So it's our smaller group. Okay. It's a subset. Uh, unless it's a census, then it's not actually a sample. It's the entire population. The summaries of the data we collect from the sample is called a sample statistic. Now, whether that statistic be, um, whether it be uh, like the, a mean or an average, or a proportion, that's usually what we look at. So one of those two. So for instance, let's say that we make this giant pot of soup or stew or whatever, we'll call it soup. So chicken noodle soup, we make chicken noodle soup uh, with peas in it, right? And we want to know um, if it's done, right? Well, we can't eat the entire thing of soup to figure out if it's done. So what we do is we take our spoon or ladle or whatever, and we stir it around. It's a very key, important part. And then we taste it, right? And we taste to see, uh, are the peas done? Is the chicken still raw, right? Is it hot enough? Is it salty enough? Whatever information we want to know about the entire population of our sample, uh, of population parameter, whatever that information is, we 
we evaluate that from our smaller sample. And so we don't have to actually eat the entire pot of soup in order for us to find out if it's too salty or if the peas are done or whatever. We can base our information that we get from our sample, which is much more manageable, and then draw conclusions or inferences based on that about the entire population. Okay, so whatever comes from over here, our sample is gonna be the sample statistic. Whatever is over here from the population is the population parameter. All right, so here we have our table here. Uh, the population parameter is uh, unknown or unknowable data. We don't know the actual uh, true amount of people who agree with the proposition of, of, of any type until we actually, um, till election day, right? The sample is gonna be the actual measured data which we can actually uh, calculate proportions or averages from. The population is everyone in the group that we're interested in. The sample is going to be a, sur a survey from the group, so a smaller, uh, smaller set of people from the group. The population we use parameters, population parameters, PMP. Samples are sample statistics, so the average, the proportion, the population, whatever. Um, that's all going to be from the sample. We use Greek letters for the population, Latin letters for the sample. The reason for that is the population is that, uh, well, Greek comes before Latin, and so we're using Greek like mu, sigma, rho, uh, or proportion p. We're going to use those values um, from Greek to represent the overall population, and then what comes after the Greek uh, Hellenistic period would be the Latin or the Roman Empire, and so we're going to use the Latin or like the... Uh, the English alphabet is what it looks like to us, right? So uh, for our center, we would measure that with mu, which would be like the mean, and then for the population, and then for the sample, we would use uh, y bar for or x bar. For a standard deviation, we use sigma, which is a Greek letter, and we use s for just the normal Latin value uh, for a standard deviation. For the correlation, we use rho, which looks like a um, looks like a P, but it's actually rho. Uh, we use that for density in physics, by the way. And then for uh, Latin, we use R, which is just a correlation coefficient calculated from the sample itself. Um, on the proportion, we use um, P, which I guess has something else in Greek. I don't know what it's called. Phi, I have no idea. And then for sample, it's just going to be P. All right, three ideas behind sampling. So samples are representations of the whole. So a sample is a smaller group of individuals from the population. A census is whenever you collect the data from the entire population. So instead of an actual sample, it's not a subset, it's the actual population itself. Uh, bias is any systematic failure of a sampling method to represent its uh, to represent its population is called bias. So whether we under or over represent um, any small portion or part of our actual population, that would be uh, considered bias. So sampling frame is a list of individuals from which the sample is selected. So usually we have, I don't know, a mailing list or a list of registered voters or something like that that we're using in order to uh, to send out whether it's uh, send out survey or emails or polls or however we're doing it. That would be considered our sampling frame. So it's a list that we use to to um, to try to represent the population. All right, randomize. So uh, randomization protects us from bias, ensures on average that the sample looks like the population. So uh, it's very, very important to randomly select people instead of letting people select to be a, you to be a part of your survey or whatever. Uh, so it's, it, that's really, really important. Uh, so make sure that your sampling frame matches the population as best you can and then randomly pick people instead of using humans to do that because humans uh, have all sorts of biases and we want to make sure that we don't have any issues in how we um, and, and biases that will actually draw draw our sample statistics off target. So it's important to use randomization. All right, sample size. It's not actually the fraction of the population, but the size of the sample that matters. So it doesn't matter that we sample uh, our samples are 25% or 10% or even 5% of the population. Uh, doesn't matter how large the population is. What actually matters is the size of the sample. So uh, a sample size of 100 is going to give us the same margin of error. So 100 out of 200, so half, right? It's going to give us the same margin of error as 100 out of 1,000, which is a tenth. So it doesn't matter if it's a tenth or a half. The proportion, the fraction doesn't matter. It's actually the sample size that will give us, that sets our margin of error. So anyway, but there is another thing we can't sample larger than 10% without replacement. But that, that goes into something else. Don't worry about that just yet. 
all right, sampling methods. So we have a simple random sample, um, the exemplar for sampling. This is what we try to do. So this is like assigning a number to each person. And then we randomly select from a list of individuals in the population. Okay, so assign random numbers and then pick the lowest in numbers would be one way to do it. So you can assign random numbers to all your students or whoever you're, is in your population and then select the lowest ones would be one way of doing it. Assign random integers zero to nine, then select all the fives. That would be fine. So we're basically assigning numbers and using some some method to be able to select randomly select which ones are actually going to be sampled stratified sampling divides population to uh, homogeneous strata or groups then randomly selects individuals from each group so for instance if we sample 30 people from a group of 150 boys and 150 girls a simple random strand, uh, a simple random sample could over or under represent so let's say that we're asking people um, we've got a class of 300 and there's a, half of them are boys and half of them are girls. Like in this example here, we're asking them about their opinions on whether or not we should raise the senior dues in order to, um, build, um, I don't know, build a, a shade awning over the football stadium or something like that. Right. So, um, so who's going to be using the football stadium probably more boys and girls and so who's more likely to be in favor of this probably the guys are going to be more in favor of it than instead of the girls so if we do a simple random sample um and we select 30 people a simple random sample might give us numbers so we have um even though it's totally randomized we might have and in one case we might have let's say 20 boys that were sampled and only 10 girls well, more than likely that sample is going to have a higher proportion or in favor of it than that or not, just because of the difference that we thought between boys and girls, you could have another random sample that only had, let's say uh, 10 boys and 20 girls. Um, wow. RLS. Okay. Anyway, and that one would probably be more likely to, uh, to show opposition to the proposition or whatever. So you do have to be careful if we do think there's a difference between two groups or, um, strata is another way we're talking about that then we would go ahead and break it down so we're going to sample uh, 15 boys and 15 girls and that will make sure that we have an equal representation of boys and girls not allowing there to be um, any sort of variation from sample to sample from a simple random sample okay so kind of cool uh, then cluster sampling divides population to uh, heterogeneous clusters or groups. So randomly select one or more clusters to represent the whole population. Okay, so um, so here we have a cluster which is heterogeneous. So we have different like um, so what, what we would do basically is we'd select like one heterogeneous slice here to represent the entire um, entire Boston cream pie cake or whatever. Okay, so for instance, what we would do is we would represent. Um, so we would pick a, an entire class, let's say uh, my statistics class, which is going to have boys and girls in it and juniors and seniors in it, right? So different layers of strata. And we're just gonna assume that, that my class is gonna be representative of all of uh, Putnam City. So um, the other way of doing instead of a cluster is strata, which is breaking it down into its layers, like um, like stratosphere is like layers of different, um, uh, Stratocaster, I don't know. Anyway, lots of different things. It basically comes down to layers. So if we have frosting, the top, the, the Boston cream, and then the bottom here, basically we would sample from the top, the frosting, then we'd sample some from the bottom and then from, from here, and then uh, from the Boston cream in the middle. But a cluster just takes like one set or one group, and we hope that they're representative. So a heterogeneous group would be a cluster. Strata, which would be breaking it down by the layers. So like vertically and then horizontally is kind of the difference between the two. All right, so methods of sampling, systematic sampling, like for instance, selecting every fifth person. So every fifth person who walks in the door or something like that, it's okay if you randomly select the first person and there's no order in the list of individuals. So this would be technically randomized as long as the people are coming in randomly. Uh, if you had them coming in like in alphabetical order or something like that, then you could have uh, some issues with that. All right, so first example, uh, we need to survey a random sample of 300 passengers on a flight from San Francisco to Tokyo. Uh, name each sampling method described below. So if we pick every 10th per passenger on the uh, that boards a plane that would be systematic because again we're following some systematic way of doing it like selecting every 10th person from the boarding list we randomly select five people flying from the first class and 25 from the rest so if we notice on this one we're breaking it down into uh, into two groups so we have first class and then 25 from the rest so if we're assuming that the opinions or whatever are going to be different from those two groups this would be an example of stratified sampling 
because uh, we're breaking it down into the layers and, and sampling some from both. Uh, randomly generate 30 seat numbers and survey the passengers that sit there. That would be a simple random sample. So randomly generating the numbers. It's not broken down into strata or, or clustering, just, just one group. Randomly select a seat position, like the right uh, window, right center, right aisle, etc., and survey all the passengers sitting on those. Well, this would be a cluster sample, just like uh, one slice of Boston cream that has, it's got a little bit of everything. It's got some in first class, and it's got some in, in the middle and some in the last or whatever, but it's everyone who's on the aisle or everyone who's on the window. Um, that would that would be an example of a cluster sampling. Okay, so uh, we're hoping that they're representative, that the window seats uh, opinions are representative of the people sitting on the aisle, even though we know they're going to complain about different things. So that's probably not a great idea. Example two, questions asked, posted on the Lycos website uh, in October of 2018, I don't know, whatever. Uh, asked visitors, visitors to decide to say whether they thought eyeglasses should be allowed to be prescribed at retailers. Oh, remember, like, there was actually uh, a question in the Oklahoma thing whether or not, like, Walmart should be able to sell them. So this is actually relevant last year or two years ago or whatever. So the population that were interested... Mm, is everyone who's going to be impacted by the law. So if this is a local Oklahoma law, then we're really only interested in the opinions of Oklahomans and more importantly, Oklahomans who can vote. So that would be our population in, of interest, the population parameter of interest. So what's the, like the, not the statistic, but what, what part of, what aspect of the population are we interested in? That would be their opinion on whether or not they believe that eyeglasses should be allowed to be prescribed at retailers, or do you have to go to an actual specific uh, eye doctor in order to get a prescription? So can you, can you do that at Walmart, for instance? All right, so our sampling frame is going to be whatever list we use to to generate. So question posted on the Lycos website. So all the people who visit this website would be your sampling frame. Those are all the people that even have the option. We This isn't a very good survey because we're having people come to us instead of us finding them. Um, we need to randomly select them instead of letting them choose to participate or not. So that's that's another issue we'll talk about with bias. But anyway, our sampling frame is all the people that 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 visited the website. The sample is going to be the people that actually responded to it, or the people who, um, you know, who chose to submit or participate for whatever reason in this in the uh, in the survey. The sampling method, uh, we would call this a convenience sample because we didn't actually uh, go out of our way to randomize and randomly select people. We just kind of like set up. A shop on the side of the road and be like hey do this if you want to uh, so the only people who are actually going to participate this are people who are really bored have nothing else to do don't know how to click the red x i'm just kidding uh, so th you can't actually expect that there's no randomization that was employed here so we can't actually represent we can't expect this sample to be representative of all oklahomans in their opinions so probably only people who have really strong opinions either one way or the other are actually going to respond so this is called response bias we also the sampling method would be a convenient sample uh, in case you were wondering all right number eight ish snack foods company packaging snack foods maintains quality control by randomly selecting 10 cases from each day's production and weighing the bags. Then they open one bag from each case and inspect the contents. Identify the following items if possible, if you can't say. All right, I'm selecting 10 cases and then they open one bag. Okay, so our population is gonna be all of the, we're trying to draw conclusions about all the snack foods that are produced for that day. The population parameter of interest, they wanna know the weight of the bags and they inspect the quality of, they open one bag from each case and inspect the content. So just quality, make sure it's it's good, I guess. So th those are the two things that are interesting. So the weight and the quality. The sampling frame is gonna be, that basically they know all the stuff that was produced. They have all the stuff that was produced. So the sampling frame is the entire population. So they did a good job. They matched it up perfectly in this case. The sample that they actually select are gonna be uh, 10 cases from each production. They didn't say how they got those. Well, randomly selected. And then one, um, one. so the 10 cases were selected as a sample. And then one of those from one of those bags from each of the 10 cases is going to be also another sample. So one is a sample for the weight. One of them is a sample for the contents itself. The sampling method, they did tell us it was randomized. They didn't tell us how they selected it whether they picked um, one from each one from each area, if they just picked all of all 10 from just one area, or if they, yeah, they didn't say 
how they were, but they did say they were randomly selected. So we don't know if it was um, stratified or if it was cluster, um, assuming simple random sample, but we don't know. All right, number 10, uh, hoping to learn what issues may resonate with voters because that's how transparent they are. They only care if you do. Yeah, all right, in the coming election, the campaign manager for a mayoral candidate selects one block from each of the city's elections district. Staff members go there and interview all the res residents they find. So that screams of a cluster sample, and it is. The population, they're trying to represent all the people. So if it's a mayor, they're a mayor of a city. Um, and so they're trying to represent all the people, the voting age people of their city, right? So Oklahoma City mayor would be all everyone, all the voting age people in Oklahoma City. Uh, the population parameter of interest, what they're trying to draw conclusions on or what what issues are their constituents 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 blah, blah, blah. it's late i need to bed um are most concerned about the sampling frame that they are using they should uh, know all the residents all the voting age people um, but they're not using that they're using blocks from each city's election district so they have a list of all the elections district and they randomly selected one block so the sampling frame would be the uh, all these cities election districts the sample they would be the what they selected is one block so one you know uh, one square mile or whatever or however they divide those up and then the sampling method they didn't say if they, however they were randomly selected uh, just says that they were selected one block. Um, all right. Yeah. So the sampling method they're using, they're assuming that everyone in that one block is going to have the exact same opinions and be representative of every other block. So they just went to one block, asked as many people as they could find or go door to door at one block or whatever. Uh, you could have all kinds of issues. Um, what if one of them's in the suburbs and one of them's like more downtown, uh, with different demographics, different, you know, everything's broken out differently. It's not all completely, um, evenly mixed right so you're gonna have it's it's probably not going to be a good idea right so um this is yeah cluster samples is under a big assumption assuming that everything is 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 evenly distributed i guess is a good way of putting it so probably not a good idea to uh, do a cluster sample in this method all right number 11 wow we're only 22 minutes in i've been talking a lot and talking really fast i apologize 11 toxic 11 ish toxic waste the environment epa uh, took a map of region near former industrial waste dump and placed a grid of 502 squares on it. They randomly selected 16 of those squares by assigning numbers. Okay, so sim systematic random sample. Simple simple random sample, SRS, sorry. Because they're randomly assigning numbers and selecting 16 from them. So that just screams SRS. Um, to each grid and generate random numbers until they selected 16 grids. No big deal. I like it. Uh, then they took a soil sample from each of the 16 grids, checked them for evidence of toxic chemicals. They found no elevated levels of any harmful substances. Identify the following items if possible. If you can't, simply say so. Okay, population. So they're interested in um, the entire area, all 552 squares of the region near formal industrial waste. Okay, population parameter of interest is whether or not there's evidence of toxic chemicals. The sampling frame, they have the entire area, so they they have a good sampling frame. There's nothing that's missing from the sampling frame and the population. They're exactly the same, which is what you want. The sample itself is just going to be those randomly selected 16 grids. We're hoping that those are representative. If we randomly select them, then they should be representative, and there shouldn't be any biases because they were actually randomly selected, which is good. We're all Gucci. Uh, the following, the sampling method, this was simple randomly sampling because we were assigning numbers and then um, randomly selecting numbers from that. So good to go, nothing nothing wrong here. 13-ish uh, roadblock, state police set up a roadblock to estimate the percentage of cars with up-to-date registration, insurance, safety inspection stickers, which we don't have in Oklahoma, by the way. They usually find problems with about 10% of the cars they stop, identifying the following items if possible. If you can't simply say so. All right, so the population is going to be all the people who drive. Um, they're probably trying to draw conclusions on everyone who drives in that state, uh, more than likely just in that city, but people travel through the state, so it's kind of the people on the roads. Uh, so of all the people on the roads, 
uh, who are driving. The population parameter of interest, what do we want to know? Well, we want to know is the registration up to date, whether they have insurance, and if they've done their state safety inspections, which sounds terrible. Uh, right, the sample. So the sample is going to be the actual people that they stop. Uh, so all the people who go through the roadblock are the people who are um, who are on that highway at that time when they set up the roadblock. The sampling method um, the sampling method in this case is going to be, let me think about it. Well, you only set it up at one spot. So you're assuming that like on a highway, for instance, so you're assuming you're really only catching people that go through the highway. So you're, I would say doing a cluster in this case. So you're going to get all kinds of people, but it's just this one area. You're hoping that that one area represents all the people that travel that don't use that highway. So I would say it would be a cluster sample. Um, also, you could say it was convenient sample because you're not randomly, uh, you're not randomly selecting anyone to be a part of this. It's just whoever just so happens to commute and go on that highway. So it's not very good method. Uh, was was randomization employed? No, not at all. Um, it's just whoever went through there. We weren't randomly selecting people. We um, there might have been the sum that they stopped and didn't stop. That could, there could be some randomization there. All right, so that's it. 26 minutes. Eh, it's not too bad. I did most of the assignment for you, so you're welcome. Uh, if you have any other questions, make sure you reach out to me. Now that we're doing everything back distance learning again, it's super important. So if you do have any questions, please just stop. Uh, ask. You can ask to remind or just a comment on Google Classroom. I'll try to get back to you uh, pretty quick. So see you guys later. Have a good one. Bye.